Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Shark Squall i3 helmet. The latest version of the helmet with the lights is here and this one takes the concept a step further than what's gone before. If you're not aware of the Squall helmets, the standout feature has always been its series of LEDs which are on the chin bar surrounding the top vent and also at the rear of the helmet. This Squall i3 adds something new to that concept and that's brake lights. As well as white lights on the front, the rear lights are now red and they'll react as you brake thanks to an inbuilt accelerometer. Under normal braking, the lights just flash, and then the intensity of that flashing increases if you're braking hard. So that takes a concept that used to appeal largely on aesthetic grounds, and now it means there's an attraction for riders who want to improve their safety out on the roads. For those people, I also think the front lights are stronger than the ones on the older helmets, again, beefing up that visibility factor when you're riding at night. But before I go into too much detail about the lights, let's just run through some essential details on the helmet itself. The Shark Squall i3 runs a plastic shell, and this size medium weighs in on our scales at 1,638 grams. That's sort of on a par, I'd say, with other helmets in this category, and it's not too bad, really, when you consider the lights and the battery are always going to add some weight. There are vents at the chin bar, just here, and also up top. They're operated by quite small switches that slide down or back and allow air inside the helmet. Now I have to say they don't generate the most noticeable flow of air so I think they're really about long-term cooling rather than bringing in that immediate blast of air. They do allow some air in as I can detect an increase in the noise levels especially when I'm riding a bike with a screen but I can't really detect any real cooling effect. Now let's look at those lights then. The three blocks of LEDs sit on the chin around the vent here, on top around that vent and then also at the back by the spoiler. They run from a battery that's stowed away inside the helmet and that charges through a USB-C port that's zipped into a pouch at the nape of the neck. You then turn them on with a button at the left of the helmet rim, which also lets you select from three active modes and you can also turn the lights off completely with a long press. So push once and it goes into mode one where the front lights are off, the back lights are also off until you brake. And when you do brake, they'll flash, increasing in intensity when you brake harder. Mode two with another push of the button puts the white lights at the front on constantly. The rear lights are also on constantly until you brake when they start to flash. And then the third press on here means that everything flashes. So the white lights at the front are flashing, the rear lights are flashing all the time, and then the intensity of that flash increases when you start to brake. If you push the button again, then it cycles back to the start. So we've got front lights off, rear light braking only, and then the long press on that button is what you do to turn it off completely. If the system detects no movement of the helmet for 60 seconds, then it automatically goes into standby mode. And then when the lid moves again, it automatically restarts those lights in the same mode they were in before it was put into standby. If there's no movement for 72 hours, then the light system shuts down completely to preserve the battery. And then you need to turn them back on when you start riding by pressing the button again. Shark say the battery has enough capacity for 12 hours of use with the lights on constantly before that battery needs to be charged up again. Now I think these lights are brighter than the older squalls and the addition of that responsive brake light at the back moves it on a level from what's gone before. When I was riding at night, I'm pretty sure that having these lights on made me more visible to other traffic and that's not something I would have said for the previous squall too. Right, let's move on to the visor. This is an area where Shark excel in general in my opinion and I think this helmet is no exception. The clarity is optical class one, which is as good as it gets. And there are five interim steps as the visor travels from fully up with the lip coming to rest on the seal on the fifth of those steps. Then you push the central tab just here to lock it in place. There's no need to push any buttons to release the lock when you want to lift the visor again. Just give it a firm push on that tab and then it frees it and lets you raise the visor. With the visor on its first step up, there's a small gap for air to enter the eye port. And then the next step up also gave me plenty of air without getting in the way of my vision. I didn't, couldn't see the bottom edge of the visor been a problem. The visor detent is quite strong and I found it would stay open when riding in town with it partially open rather than closing of its own accord. There's a new mechanism holding the visor in place and it's a lot easier to use than the one on the original school and also the school 2. Once you get the knack of this it's a very quick change and as soon as we've made our how-to video on that we'll put a link in the description below. 
The visor is also protected by a pinlock anti-mist insert, which is a pinlock 70, which is the middle of the three grades available. Now here's another upgrade for Shark as well. It's much easier to rotate the pinlock pins to adjust the tension on the insert if you need to. Rather than pressing the pins out and then having to push them back through in a different position, you can now just rotate them in situ. The sun visor on this helmet operates on a sliding tab on top of the lid and it gives good coverage reaching down as far as the breath guard. Now, Shark have recently also got on board with the idea of putting anti-fog coatings on their sun visors and they've protected this one too, which is welcome news for me as I found that worked well. Okay, let's move to the interior. It's fully removable and it's easier to remove and refit than the liners you get in some of the pricier Sharks as well. The material covering the liner is a good quality and the materials around the base are also a step up in quality on the previous school helmets. There's no foam in the tops of the cheek pads, which leaves room for spectacle arms and there's a small amount of adjustment in the liner as well. So if you find the fit a little bit too tight from front to back, then there's an extra block of foam that's attached between the lining and the EPS at the back here, and you can just take that out to give yourself a bit more room. This is part of what Shark call best fit. It's a new system where they've scanned loads of different riders' heads and say they've developed a new helmet shape to suit the widest range of those heads. I've seen other reviewers of this helmet complain that the new fit was less comfortable for them than the old Shark fit was. Now, helmet fit's always subjective, so I would say for every person who says the best fit system is now worse, there will be probably someone who thinks it's now better. From my own point of view, this helmet felt just as comfortable as other Sharks I've worn over the years, but it's probably best to say, don't just assume this is gonna fit as well as previous Sharks if you've always gotten well with them, and don't just assume it'll fit as badly as others if you've always struggled with Sharks. You should give it a try before you rule this in or before you rule it out. The strap fastener on this helmet is a micrometric buckle, and there are also very deep recesses for intercom speakers. Shark lists a compatible intercom from the Encom range, which is the B902SK. It's not available as we record this, but I think most riders are gonna to wanna to fit their own choice of comms to this helmet anyway. I think you'll need to attach the intercom to the shell with a self-adhesive pad, as there's quite a lot of stuff really that blocks the use of a clamp mount around the rim here. The contours on this helmet, this one especially, mean it's going to have to sit a fair way forward as well. So I would be looking to fit something that's quite small. Something like an Interphone Newcom 3 would be ideal, I think, as getting a bigger unit would mean you're going to have to sit it too far forward for my liking. Okay, let's get on to sizing and approvals. The Squall i3 comes in sizes from extra small up to 2XL, which is a range from 53 to 64 centimetres. There are two shell sizes. The smaller shell covers helmets from extra small up to medium, and then the larger shell covers helmets from large up to 2XL. The Squall i3 is approved to the latest ECE 2206 standard for the road, as all new helmet models released from 2023 onwards have to be. It's way too early for a rating under the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Scheme, but we'll add that info to the description for this video as and when one of those ratings is released. It's also approved, this helmet, by the ACU for use on tracks here in the UK. Okay, so here are my thoughts on this lid. This is a significant step up in quality on the previous Squall models in my opinion. The lights are better, the lining's better, the visor mounting mechanism is much better, and the overall build quality is superior to those older lids. The lights on this made me feel more visible on the road, and my riding partner said that was definitely the case that I stood out more. Whether the brake lights are gonna attract enough attention to make a following rider or driver less likely to run into the back of me, I really couldn't say, but I am pretty sure that it won't make them more likely to run into the back of me. The only real downside overall with this helmet, I think, is the performance of the ventilation, although helmets with plastic shells like this often end up being a bit poor for ventilation anyway. Aside from that venting issue, the Squall i3 is a thoroughly decent helmet and at 240 pounds in plain colors like this, or 280 pounds in graphics, it's also reasonably competitively priced. If you're really not bothered about lights and you don't mind having a slightly less premium interior than this one, then Shark's d Score 3 might suit you better. That helmet has no lights, it's got a more basic comfort lining and it's also got a significantly lower price, but in all other regards, it's exactly the same helmet. Working on our review of that helmet at the moment and as soon as it's published, we'll make sure a link pops up on the screen. But as far as this Squall i3 goes, I've been very impressed with this helmet and I think Shark have done a really good job of moving this on from what's gone before. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Shark Squall i3 helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.